If you're only one or two for Christmas this year, I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie meal, <laughs> a charcuterie tray meal on a sheet pan. So first I went to Walmart, I picked up my various ingredients and got them all in my cart. You see some spare ingredients in there because I was also shopping for some other future videos. And here are all the ingredients I got. I got a Cornish rock Cornish hen. This will be our protein for the meal. Then I got a little bit of green beans, just about two servings worth of green beans, one potato, a pack of these mushrooms, a pack of cream cheese, one can of cream style corn, a bag of Parmesan cheese, which actually we only used half of this bag, and then a cornbread stuffing mix. I also used several of my pantry staples. I used some butter spray, some Montreal chicken seasoning. I love this seasoning on chicken. Some garlic powder, some Lowry seasoned salt, or any seasoned salt is good. Thyme, parsley, chopped onion, dried chopped onion to be exact. A little bit of margin, which I did not use the full amount that the back of the stuffing mix would call for normally. The thing that will take the longest to bake is that Cornish hen or that Cornish chicken. So I went ahead and made a little foil tray out of a little bit of tin foil. We went ahead and took the chicken out just to drain any juices off of it. Went ahead and added some salt and pepper. At this point, you could also add in your Montreal chicken seasoning. I forgot it till halfway after it was baked, so you might not want to forget it, and this is your reminder to put that on instead. <laughs> then I went ahead and put it on that little tray and added in some pats of the margarine around the chicken just to add a little extra seasoning, a little extra flavor, and let it absorb into the chicken as it cooks. I set my oven to 350 degrees at this point as well, just to get it to preheat. Now I'm making a little bit of stuffing. Now if I'm honest, the stuffing that went inside of this little chicken was pretty wet. So if I were redoing this recipe, I might leave all of it out and just make extra dressing parmesan balls as you will see that I made a little bit later. So I took a half a cup of my cornbread stuffing, added in a fourth a cup of boiling water and mixed it up and you'll get a texture that is still a little bit loose but it should stick slightly together and then I just spooned it all inside of the bird. I'd love to hear from you all below. What are you all doing this Christmas? Are you going anywhere? Are you having friends over? Are you hosting this year? Or are you having a quieter Christmas this year? Last Christmas, I made a different video showing a different charcuta meal, sheet pan meal, that I used a ham steak for. So if you were wanting a different type of meat or even just a different type of meal, I will link that up above so that you can check that one out if that's more your speed meal-wise. I then started on this cornbread or corn pudding. I don't know if you all have this, but every year at Thanksgiving and Christmas at my extended family's house, this is what we would have. We would have a cornbread pudding and normally use a Jiffy mix. I'm going to be substituting some of the cornbread stuffing in this. So I put in the whole can of creamed corn and one whole cup of the cornbread stuffing. And then I just mix that together. And now we're into a separate bowl and we're going to be making, with the rest of the corn bread, we're going to be making some rolls. And it's going to be like a cornbread roll. We're using a whole cup of the cornbread stuffing again and then a half a cup of the shredded parmesan and a half a cup of boiling water. And with this we're going to be mixing it all together and this will make our stuffing balls that we'll have on the side. Or I guess dressing balls since it's not inside of the turkey or inside of the, the bird. Now I switched back to my pudding mixture, my corn pudding, and I went ahead and just dropped spoonfuls into our um, little cupcake liners that I have on the side here and just filled those up to the brim. This doesn't rise or anything and it doesn't spread a whole lot so you don't have to worry about it overflowing or anything if you fill it up pretty high to the top and it made quite a bit. Now I'm also starting on our seasoned potatoes. I didn't do a whole lot with potatoes so I felt like you could also have substituted a sweet potato if you had rather 
and it might even cut down a little bit on the price because I think I can get a sweet potato for about 33 cents instead of the 50-ish cents that this potato cost. One net thing that I would change is cut your wedges even smaller than I cut them because I felt like one out of every five potato was slightly underdone. So I would cut them even smaller than what you see here. Then I took some of that Lowry seasoned salt and just sprinkled that all over them and went ahead and added a little bit of thyme too because I wanted to make these into some thyme seasoned roasted potatoes. If you were using a sweet potato, you can make a savory sweet potato by using a little bit of the thyme, some of the salt, and just sprinkling that on top of your sweet potato and then you'd have maybe a little more color as well. I realize this meal is a fairly yellow meal and all but uh, that's what you get when you use a lot of corn and cornbread. It all tasted delicious but I will say it could have used a little more color given that I tend to err on the side of more colorful foods. I went ahead and also made some stuffed mushrooms, which I was really excited about these. I know mushrooms aren't everybody's cup of tea, but I really love them. So I went ahead and took the stems out and set them aside. And I kind of left the center whole so that I would be able to stuff them later with a cream cheese mixture. And the stems I went ahead and sliced up into thin slivers so that I could add those into our roasted green beans, which you'll see me making in a minute here. So just slice these all up, all the stems of the mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, you can leave this off and you can substitute something else that you would rather like, a different vegetable, or I even pondered doing some broccoli. You could use that with the leftover Parmesan that we did not use all of. In a pan, I went ahead and added in a little bit of that Montreal chicken seasoning. It was about a half a teaspoon and about a half a teaspoon of the chopped onion as well as about a tablespoon of the margarine. I went ahead and added in all of the mushroom slivers that I had cut up and let those saute together until they had a little bit of color on it and the butter had started to become a little bit golden. I went ahead and added some salt and pepper. I added in a decent amount of salt because I was planning on adding in all of those green beans so I wanted them to be well seasoned. I did not really cook the green beans. I just coated them with the sauce mixture and put them onto the pan. And then I did take a cube of the cream cheese mixture and put them in the center of each of those corn puddings. You could optionally have melted a little bit of the cream cheese and added it into your corn pudding mixture before you mixed everything up because it does normally call for a little bit of sour cream. So I'm using that instead of sour cream. Now to get started on the filling for our stuffed mushrooms, I went ahead and added in a fourth a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of the chopped onion, and a half a teaspoon of parsley flakes. And then I went ahead and softened up that cream cheese and smushed it all together. <laughs> Then added in a half a cup of Parmesan and mixed that all together as well. I stuffed these very well all the way to the top and some overflowing as well. And I did find that I had a little bit of cream cheese left over. So if you had some bread, this might make a decent spread for the bread and then you could heat it up. After I finished stuffing each of those mushrooms, I went ahead and crumbled up one of those cornbread Parmesan balls I had made earlier and just put it separately on the, the cutting board and then I just dipped and coated the top with the cornbread. This is going to crisp up really nicely on the pan and the top will be nice and crispy while the bottom should be well cooked through. Now this step is optional but I did spray our chicken with a little bit of that butter spray. This just helped it to get a little bit of color. I baked it in our oven at 350 degrees for 35 more minutes. And this is how it turned out. You can see everything got nice and toasty. Those green beans roasted very nicely. And all of our cheese has melted. You can see that cheese pull inside of the mushrooms. These were so good. I loved the mushrooms. 
and my husband was interested to try corn pudding because I don't think he had tried it up until this point and he said it was very decent he hadn't had it before so it was a new thing for him to try out but something that my family has definitely made very often growing up I also found that the chicken was nice and well done. I made sure that it reached up to 165 degrees internally and here's our finished plate. I hope whoever you're celebrating with that you all are having a very merry holiday season and a merry Christmas and I hope that you all enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you all in the next one.